with climate change. Finding fresh water could be a major issue in the future. Some experts say that wars could be fought over water resources. So how do dry countries deal with their problems? Starting today, Da'ai Headlines will be bringing you a series of reports from Israel, a nation that has come up with some innovative water technologies. The Middle Eastern state has a population of 7.4 million people who live on an area of 22,000 square kilometers of land, which is about two-thirds the size of Taiwan. Two-thirds of the country is desert and annual rainfall is only 500 millimeters, which is a quarter of what falls on Taiwan. Sea water, river water, rain water, lake water. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, but only 2.5% is fresh and only 0.074% is drinkable. According to the United Nations, global demand for water has risen six times since the turn of the 20th century. If human thirst for water continues at this rate, by the year 2025, two-thirds of the global population, over five billion people, will not have enough water. In the scramble for water, some experts predict that wars will be fought in the 21st century over water supplies. On the other hand, if water could be the future cause of conflict, couldn't it also be the foundation for a new dawn of peace and stability? Jerusalem is a holy place for the three great religions of Judaism, Islam and Christianity. It is also the capital of Israel. Although overflowing with history and culture, the city has a serious shortage of water. But what Israel lacks in natural resources, it makes up in the resourcefulness of its people. Virtually every home has a solar water heater on the roof. Lacking oil, at an early stage, Israel realized it needed to find alternative sources of power. The same is true of water. With 22,000 square kilometers of land, Israel is about two-thirds the size of Taiwan. Two-thirds of the country is arid, most of the south is desert, with an average annual rainfall of only 25 millimeters. The north, the Jordan Valley, and the coastal plain are more fertile. But the annual rainfall is still only 800 millimeters, making the national average 25 percent of Taiwan's rainfall. Israel uh, water consumption is around 2 billion cubic meter per year and uh, water resources, natural resources is around 1 billion. That means Israel suffering uh, minus 1 billion water cubic meter per year. Since the independent state was created in 1948, Jews who are spread out all over the world came back to Israel in a wave of immigration that put yet more pressure on the country's already limited water resources. Since Israel was created as an independent state, the population increased in the last 50 years by about 25 times. Israel's current population is over 7.4 million. Perhaps their difficult circumstances have made Israelis good at coming up with creative solutions to their problems. With government backing, local companies have developed techniques to tackle the issue of water shortage, turning Israel into a window on the future of water technologies. In our continuing series of reports from Israel, we find out why the country is a world leader in water technology. There is only one reservoir in the whole of the country, the Sea of Galilee which is being threatened by overdevelopment and global warming. Meanwhile, experts say the world-famous Dead Sea could dry up in 50 years. We went to Israel to find out how the country is dealing with its water shortage problems. Using a woman's face to illustrate the problem of water shortage gets the message across in a shocking way. With an average annual rainfall of only four to five hundred millimeters and one reservoir of water, the Sea of Galilee in the north, little wonder that Israelis say their mood goes up and down with the level of the water. Water security is a major concern in Israel, even here at the world-famous Dead Sea. 
400 meters below sea level, the Dead Sea has such a high salt content that swimmers can float on the surface. However, development by Israel and Jordan along the Jordan River has cut the flow of water into the Dead Sea. Increased demand for river water coupled with rising temperatures has combined to reduce the Dead Sea's supply by 75%. The temperature used to hover just over 40 degrees, but recently a new record of 51.4 degrees, the highest in 70 years, was reached. With evaporation, the experts estimate the Dead Sea could dry up in 50 years. Meanwhile, Asef Barnia adds an ice cube to a glass and pours in water straight from the tap before coolly drinking it. A former Israeli basketball star, Asaf is now the CEO of a water technologies incubator. He has confidence in the quality of tap water because, he says, Israel realized it needed to address its water problem at an early stage and is now more advanced than other countries. See, um, these are all start companies, AquaDigital, Aquarius, T-Account. We invest and we're looking forward to have more investment coming over to bring those early companies and early technologies into the market. Apart from developing water technologies, the government put up the price of water to help suppliers. The tariff didn't cover all the cost for production and transportation. So in uh, 2007, uh, the government of Israel decided to establish the water authority. The price of Israeli water went from one US dollar 30 cents per cubic meter to one dollar 60 for households that use under 2.5 cubic meters a month and 265 for other households in the second stage of price adjustment. Compare those prices to Taiwan where the average cost is around 35 cents per cubic meter and you realize why it's easier to promote water technologies in Israel. Every two years, the Watek exhibition for renewable energy and environmental control draws in a surprising amount of business. The big Last water. year's exhibition in 2009 had over 800 water technology companies taking part. Water technology exports in 2007 alone reached a value of over 1 billion US dollars. A raft of national policies has helped make Israel a world leader in water technology. From seawater desalinization to biological wastewater treatment and the global phenomena of drip irrigation, Israel is not only turning the threat of water shortage into opportunities, but is going a step closer to developing new commercial ventures. Desalination of seawater has been touted as a solution to the world's water shortage problem. However, Israel has been drawing on the ocean to supply its taps for many years. Half of the country's water supply comes from the sea, and the world's largest desalination plant is in Israel. The nation is also number one in recycling wastewater. We went to Israel to learn more. The Mediterranean coast is Israel's holiday paradise. For thousands of years, the Mediterranean has been the gateway to the three great continents of Europe, Asia and Africa. The sea is also a valuable source of water for arid Israel. Israel leads the world in desalinization of seawater and until an even larger facility was built, Ashkelon was the country's biggest desalinization plant. But how much of Israel's drinking water comes from the ocean? 50%. We have uh, three desalination plants that working and their capacity is around 350 million cubic meters per year. 350 million cubic meters is equivalent to 109 of Taiwan's Shimen reservoirs. Although seawater desalinization produces half of Israel's water supply, the country plans to make that figure 70% by 2013. But finding new sources of water is not enough. Apart from household demand, Israel has to produce 1 billion cubic meters of water a year for agriculture, which makes up around 60% of total usage. To satisfy the thirsty farming sector, Israel developed a wastewater recycling program. In the first stage of treatment, the water is filtered for large particles and oil. Next, it's taken to aeration basins, 
where the remaining contaminants are broken down by bacteria, including ciliata, flagellata, amoeba, pseudomonas, and Alca ilgenes fecalis. After eating their fill, the bacteria sink to the bottom, turning into sludge and leaving clean water on top. At this stage, most countries would release the retreated water into a river, but in Israel, it's purified underground. As you can see, the Richard Basin okay, is like that, and the, all the water percolate, percolate to the ground and then pumped after around one year of retention time, and it's applied to our customers. To recap, wastewater is sent through different levels of treatment from the first stage of filtering to biological oxidization and settling and separation before it's pumped underground and naturally filtered. The purified water is almost as clean as tap water. This process means that Israel can recycle 75% of its wastewater, not only making it the world number one, but putting it head and shoulders above the second, third and fourth place countries. 75% of recycled water is used for irrigation in agriculture. The miracle of turning Israel's wilderness into a fertile promised land starts here.